5 a.m. Clashes broke out in the Central African capital. We're at the heart of the fighting. Get to the other side of the street. Shoot into the heat. Primarily Muslim militias are clashing with Christian self-defense groups. The Battle of Bengi took everyone by surprise. There's the second one. Shoot, shoot! In a few hours, the French army will intervene. Officially, it's a short-term peacekeeping mission. In fact, it's a high-risk operation. It's one month before the Battle of Bangui and the French intervention. In the capital, all appears to be calm. In fact, tensions are already palpable. Armed men stand at every intersection. Muslim militia men stop citizens at checkpoints. Above the city stands a fort. In this former French military camp resides the president of the Central African Republic. It is symbolically situated on the Place Valéry Giscard d'Estaing. The president of the Central African Republic, Joto Dia, lives here under protection. For security reasons, he almost never leaves the building. His his militia men are accused of putting the country under the scalpel with rape and looting. Half hideaway, half bedlam, Kanghu has become the seat of power, or at least what's left of it. Mr. President, can you introduce the people around you? This is the chief of staff of the armed states. And this is the deputy chief of staff in charge of operations. You meet with your generals every morning? Yes. We sit down and go over everything. So what is the country situation now? Well, it's fine. The situation is good. The question of the day is an important one. The country's only aircraft is grounded, following an accident. We had a 10-seater plane, which collided with a goat during your landing. Mm. Has it been repaired? Not yet. We need 34 million CFA francs. We need that plan. Okay, until the chief of staff has fixed the situation, we'll have to do with what we have on hand. Michel Jododia came to power seven months ago. As a former official, he rallied the mostly Muslim northern rebels. His military coalition, dubbed Silica, meaning the alliance in Sango language, took Bengi in two hours, almost without a fight. The National Assembly endorsed the coup. We can, with consensus, elect the only available candidate, Chairman Michael Jotodia. If there are no objections, we can vote by acclamation. The population of the CAR, which is 80% Christian, welcomed the new president in triumph. With a Muslim father and Christian mother, Jotodia appeared reassuring. Friends did not meddle. But soon, things went wrong. Selika militiamen often come from neighboring Muslim countries, such as Chad and Sudan. These foreign mercenaries have been accused of piaging the country and massacring Christians. At the UN rostrum, François Hollande sounded the alarm. 
Today, chaos has been seeded, and the civilian populations are once more the victims. We must put an end to these abuses, which appear in the guise of confession. Now, seven months after taking office, the president has lost all credibility. He can only leave his fortified compound under heavy escort. The inauguration of a small section of road in Bangui. Reviewing the government. The Prime Minister, Nicolas Tiangaye, stands at his side in suit and tie. Good news, he has unearthed a working plane. I have to go. You found a plane? But we already have a plane. You don't want it? I'll take the United Nations one. Okay, very well. Take the United Nations airplane and you leave us ours. Tiangay is Christian. Though a longtime ally of Jotodia, he now keeps his distance. This government fracture reflects that of the country. To get a better view, we left the presidential motorcade. Direction Galabaja, a Christian neighborhood in the north of the city. In the market, people denounce Silika power and abuses by Muslim militias. As a market vendor, I'm afraid. It's insecure. We aren't eating well. Now that he's president, he must assume his duties. We want a new president. This one isn't capable of running the country. A few kilometers further north, in the bush, Christians have responded by forming self-defense groups called anti-balakas. They number 15,000 across country. One of their leaders is a former corporal in the Alfred Hombo army. We're here to liberate the people. A revolution for armed forces for the Central African people. Rombo has lived in the bush for seven months, ever since the Silicas took Bangui and occupied the former army barracks. His dream? To topple President Jotodia and his allies. The Silicas are foreigners. They're Chadians, Sudanese. Even our army doesn't have Chadians. We don't have any Musas or Adams. What we want now is to see an end to Selecas in our territory. Four hours march through the bush. The corporal leads us to one of their bases. On the way, the villagers are won over to him. We hate Arabs. We can't take any more. We want them to leave. As Central Africans, we would like to live peacefully at home. At the base, Rombot commands a small army of 1,500 men. Some former soldiers are armed with Kalashnikovs. Many civilians carry sticks, old rifles and machetes. This is our country, not Muslims. This is not a Muslim country. It is a country of Central Africans. Jotodia, get out! Corporal Rombo donned his fatigues. Now he's binding his time. Back in Bengi. The Silicas are also preparing for conflict. They're assembling new militias with as much force as possible. President Jotodia inspects his troops. The president claims he's powerless against the reported abuses of his men. 
I'm in charge of everyone who's come along with me, all who are Seleka. But when we returned, there were some people we did not know, dressed in uniform and claiming to be Seleka. How can I be asked to control them? It's impossible. Fall in line. Move to the left. From their station at the airport, French soldiers observe the comings and goings. It is still more than a month before the military intervention, but they already know that the operation will be complicated. Their problem? The threat is spread out among the population. They cannot clearly identify enemies. Our mission here, from the roof of the airport, is to monitor the approach that leads to the airport and its surroundings, and be able to support the checkpoints along the last 400 meters, and of course, protect the airport. Today was especially quiet, just a few pickups. It's difficult for us to identify them. We can never be 100% sure who someone is. Why can't we recognize them? We can't spot them because they're dressed differently and not all clearly identified. So to us it's just armed men in pickup trucks. Beyond that, there are no particular signs. Late September 2013, clashes between Christians and Muslims spread across the country. It's killed in Bosangoa, massacres in Buar, deadly reprisals in Damara, atrocities in Bangui. Today we look at a country on the brink of chaos. Is France going to intervene? It's bordering on genocide. Central Africa is a country of five million inhabitants, but with more land than France. It's in the heart of Africa, as the name suggests, and now it's an absolute mess. Genocide. The word is out. Twelve days after the interview with Laurent Fabius, President Jotodia struck back. He called the press to this downtown building. A Muslim-focused massacre just 42 kilometers from Bengi has left 12 dead, according to Silicas. They were massacred by these. The survivors were carried back and displayed on trucks. Muslims accused the Christians. They killed many people in my home. They cut my husband's head off in front of my own children. And then the anti balaka set fire to our house. That's the pre-genocide. That's the pre-genocide. We are overwhelmed. Look at this. Is it even human? We ask the world to bear witness. The Prime Minister must come to see what's happening, and now. Now that we've seen these things, this is too much. What is this? I'll go get it. You'd better go. Go fetch the Prime Minister. If you don't, we'll go ourselves. He has to see what the anti balakas have done. Half an hour later, the Prime Minister arrives. Go ahead, show him. With a stern expression, the Christian Nicolas Tiangaye witnesses the Muslim victims. The Silicas take him to task. If they were Christians who had died, people would be burning everything. But since they're Muslim, there's no reaction. We're going to kill each other. Only the strongest will remain. Go check on the ones laid out in the cars. He wouldn't make any comment. The very same evening, he flew to Paris for a French-American summit, where he was France's principal advisor to the crisis. Bengi is holding its breath. It's only a matter of days before the French intervene. 
but an unexpected event will turn everything upside down. To great surprise, Bengi has come under attack. The Selikas were taken by surprise. It is total confusion. They rush toward the shooting. The battle in Bengi has just begun. We're in the northwest of the city. Selika soldiers speak Arabic amongst themselves, instead of the local Songo language. These mercenaries are from Chad and Sudan, and on the payroll of President Jatodia. The invisible enemy has penetrated the city. The attackers hide out in houses. Threat is omnipresent. In a courtyard, we come across two injured Silica militants. Actually, Christian self defense militias, anti Balakas, and former army soldiers. Rounded Bangui in a coordinated attack. In a northwestern Harla district, Corporal Harombo direct operations. But around 10 a.m., the Selikas counterattack. A machine gun clears the field and opens a pathway. Back off! Morale, morale! We will fight the anti Balakas. Bit by bit, they will all flee because they're the ones who came after us. We said nothing. The international community must look at what is happening. They came with machetes, but we had firearms. We did not start this. They did. Now the Seleka will destroy them. I assure you that we will ensure security. Morale, morale! The better armed Seleka's make quick progress. It's clean. We're going to clean it all up. The commander is a young soldier, 36 years old, named General Yaya. This Muslim man claims to have spent 20 years in the National Army before joining the defected Selika rebels during the March 2013 coup. Men appear at the end of the road. The Selikas fire a rocket to clear the path. They were civilians. Their mags at random on anything that moves. The last village before the bush and totally deserted. Christian inhabitants fled to the other side of the river, along with the attackers. It's over. They've already gone. Midday. After seven hours of firefights, the Battle of Bengi comes to an end. The Christian offensive has failed. The Selika militiamen come back to town. They come face to face with the French patrol. General Yaya has to negotiate. Hello, boss. How are you doing? Everything's going well? What's the matter? What are you doing here? Do you speak French or not? Do you speak French? Do you speak French? Okay. Tell him we're not here to bother you. We're just making our rounds. So if you can just move the vehicle there, we will go on our way. No problem. No problem. We have no problem with you, so you don't have a problem with us. For now, the French have no mandate to intervene. They are just on ground patrol. Oh, 
In the Muslim neighborhood of PK5, people greet the victorious militiamen. A gunshot. Almost before our eyes, a militiaman shoots a man bound on the ground. A dozen civilian casualties and Christian fighters appear before the National Assembly. On this very day, more than 1,000 deaths occurred in Bengi, according to Amnesty International. At the hospital, victims are crowded in miserable conditions. They are treated by volunteers with Doctors Without Borders, with whatever is at hand. A Salika fighter was even injured trying to break through a French army checkpoint near the airport. Why did the French army shoot at you? It may have been confusion. He may have thought I was a rebel. Who knows? But I, I got out and said, we are the government forces, stop shooting, stop shooting. He didn't hear. He aimed his rifle and shot me in the right leg. The situation threatens to degenerate. At 4.20 p.m., the UN gives the green light for a French intervention. The draft resolution has been unanimously adopted as Resolution 2013-21-27. Three hours later, François Hollande announced the start of Operation Sangaris, a 1,600-strong peacekeeping force. Given the urgency of the situation, I chose to act immediately. That is to say, tonight. France aims to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. This mission will be fast. It is not meant to last. And I'm sure it will succeed. French tanks are deployed in Bangui the day after the aborted attack by Christian fighters. Mission, to disarm the belligerents and bring peace to the country. The servicemen of Operation Sangaris crisscross the capital. This time, they have the right to shoot. The peacekeeping force helps calm the population. The French need to go neighborhood by neighborhood to see what goes on here. We want to thank President Holland. It's by his initiative that they are helping us, truly. Paris, the long-awaited France-Africa summit has begun. Forty countries are represented. Central African President Jotodia was not invited. His Prime Minister, Christian Nicolas Tiangaye, was welcomed to the Élysée Palace by François Hollande. This is an exceptional summit with exceptional topics. That includes peace. Back in Bangui, Prime Minister Tiangaye's home was looted during his trip to Paris. All that has to go inside. Put it in the house. Selika General Yaya assesses the damage. This is the Prime Minister's house. Religious or political reprisal or simple criminal plunder. It is impossible to know. In the bush, thousands of Christian refugees are hiding in fear of silica reprisals. How long have they been there? Three days. We don't have much food. Look what that woman is doing. Look what we prepared as food. What will become of us? We want peace, so that we can truly move out of this situation. Mm. 
That's my daughter, my grandson, my wife there. You see how we live? It's very bad. We have reptiles and snakes that might bite us right here. The Selekas seek revenge upon us. We don't know why. They swore they'd come and sacrifice us all. Burn our houses. Kill our children. Do this. Do that. They swore to come to take revenge on us. So right now, we're afraid. At Kanghu, President Jotodia celebrates. His men have taken a score of Christian prisoners. Speaking to the press, he begins to preach. This is no good. No. It's sad. Why are you doing this? Why do you sacrifice your life for such a blurry cause? Where's the prosecutor? I'm here. We'll see if we have to release them. Do what you want to do. Justice has only to run its course. In reality, there, the country no longer has a judicial system. These men will be loaded into a truck and taken to an unknown destination. An hour later, the president holds a press conference. On behalf of the Central African people, I wish to express our gratitude to the French president, François Hollande, as well as all the heads of state of the sub-region who have spared no effort for the rapid recovery of peace and security in the Central African Republic. In your opinion, who's responsible for the ongoing abuses in the neighborhoods of Bangui? People are alleging that I can't control my men. How will I control all these people? I know those who came with me. I can control those who are with me. But as for those who are not with me, how can I control them? Am I God? I hope I'm not God. I'm a man like you. Thank you. It is a turning point in the crisis. Three days after French intervention under UN mandate, the French army begins to disarm the Muslim Selika militias. In Christian neighborhoods, people applaud. In this building, the French have discovered a weapons stockpile. They confiscate everything. There are weapons everywhere. There's enough for at least 10 regiments. Don't take that out. Leave it. Watch it. That thing is armed. Put the RPGs over there with the others. This is a sealed case. Leave it. There are mines inside. Leave it. Try not to open any boxes. You never know what's inside, okay? The Silica militia watches helplessly from afar. Suddenly, the crowd stirs. Insults and threats the inhabitants toward two disarmed militiamen. They came, us, they came after us in our homes. Another militiaman arrives on the other side, carrying a suitcase. The French soldiers panic. Hey, put it down. Put the suitcase down. Drop it. Put the suitcase down. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. 
He was immediately arrested and taken away. In this same house, the French have already arrested other militiamen. Don't feel. C'est pas le dispositif. These are terrorists. They are terrorists. They are Selekas. We want peace. We want peace. A new stampede. Two Muslims, dressed in white, passing on a motorcycle, are taken to task. Central African gendarmes intervene to halt a lynch mob. They eventually escape. Fear has switched sides. Muslims were being threatened. In another neighborhood of Bengi, the crowd sets fire to cars and raid the homes of disarmed silikas. After months of terror, it is the largest Christian outpouring to date. That night, drama would strike the French army. We begin with sad news that broke early this morning. Two of our soldiers died last night in Bangui during a clash with militias. These are the first victims in the French ranks since the beginning of Operation Sangaris in Central Africa. That same evening, François Hollande arrived at Bangui airport. Returning from Nelson Mandela's funeral, he paid homage to the French soldiers. François Hollande has called President Jotodia to the French base. He will meet him, but away from cameras. He aims to put pressure on the Selika Central African authorities. As for these authorities, if there's a time to act, they must act, they must work together, and they must allow orders to be executed. That includes the first of these orders, the disarmament of militia. Thank you. In the bush, Corporal Rombo has not given up attacking Bangui. Now that Silicas have been partially disarmed, the time has come for revenge. A small delegation of veterans meet at the village entrance. Final instructions before the offensive. Meet at the village entrance. Final instructions before the offensive. Looting is forbidden. If I catch anyone looting, I will kill them. I tell you that now. I will kill you. No need to rob our own country clean. Leave that to the Arabs. Understood? Do not envy your neighbor. Do not harm civilians. Do you understand? Understood? 
The greatest fear is of leaks. For safety reasons, mobile phones are prohibited. If someone is caught using a phone, they will be considered a traitor. Even if it takes 10 people to catch him, we will find them and brutally kill them. We don't care about the state of your soul. Come night, they head towards Bangui, to a point on the outskirts of the capital, right next to the French-held airport. The night before battle, there is a last war meeting. At 2 a.m. tomorrow, we attack, no matter the conditions. We'll shoot with the machine gun. Suddenly, Corporal Rombaud is called by his aide. When he returns, the program has changed. I was told to stand down tomorrow. I've been informed that the Chadians and Sudanese mercenaries are being disarmed. Once the Selekas are disarmed, the French will let us go in. Tomorrow, France will strike the Muslim section and will be behind to capture those who try to flee. We don't know where the instructions came from, but the offensive has been postponed. Alfred Rombaud heads to bed. Come morning, the situation in Bangui is backed up. The group Maraboot arrives. He's the one to make lucky charms for the fighters, rendering them invincible. A little demonstration to prove these powers. According to him, the bullet of the gun can be offset by this magic. The important thing is to believe. He swallowed a razor blade to prove that pain cannot affect him. That's an anti-bullet. Come on, swallow it. <laughs> In Bengi, the situation becomes critical. For one week, majority Christian refugees stream toward the airport. At least 30,000 occupy this makeshift camp. Every day, dozens of wounded civilians arrive here for emergency treatment. According to NGOs, one in three children is infected with malaria. Emergency aid arrives in a trickle. Only three pints of water. Sleep is impossible on the floor due to the cold, mud and insects. We're missing protective canvases, mosquito nets, covers, sweaters. We need this for the babies and the pregnant women because they need protection. The French government has to find a solution. Why? Because they are our colonizer. They have to defend us from all this. In Bengi, 55 different refugee camps have sprouted up. They welcome some 300,000 displaced people, one third of the capital's population. Paris, December 16, 2013. At the Invalides, a ceremony honors the two French soldiers killed in action. Bengi.
On the day of the Invalide ceremony, Selika General Yaya is at his encampment. How are you? You all right? Please, relax. He commands 1,000 men, but by order of President Jotodia, under pressure from the French, they may no longer leave the capital with their weapons. The militiamen lie about camp, waiting for who knows what. The general cares for the injured. At lunchtime, Yaya takes us to his home in a residential neighborhood. It was the home of a diplomat. He requisitioned it after the coup in March 2013. My two children are here, Ali and Yoel. Their mother is Christian. What are we going to do if Christians and Muslims are separated? On the television, the ceremony at the Invalide. I blame France. I testify that the French army has disarmed Muslim civilians and left them to be massacred by Christians. France is charged with assuring the country's security. That they then allow such things to happen is not right. Did France stand idly at the massacres? Controversy swells in Paris. The defense minister replies. We are heavily involved in what I call impartial disarmament. Impartial disarmament means that ex Saleka and former anti balaka must lay down their weapons, and they will then receive protection. This also precludes reprisal or retaliation by any one group on another. There are extremists on both sides who prey upon the Central African people regardless of denomination. Impartial in principle, but by the reality on the ground. Corporal Rombaud is now camped on the outskirts of Bangui. In an abandoned school, 100 men. At mass time, the pastor launched into a very political sermon. Lord, hear our prayers. God is the protector of what? He is God of whom? Of the army. Is that understood? God is the Lord of the army, the first warrior. That is why God has gathered you here this morning, to fight our enemies and liberate the Central African Republic. Christians continue to train in anticipation of battle. They appear better equipped with more machine guns. This man is Lieutenant Corporal Rombaut. Remember his face. During the day, a detachment of the French army performs reconnaissance on Corporal Rombaut's base. When our camera appears, it's uncomfortable. The conversation is halted. The captain of the French Special Forces speaks with a self-defense militia leader. He's walking on eggshells. Everyone must be disarmed. Both Selecas, ex facas and anti balakas I'm here today to disarm, but also to deliver a message on disarmament and also on camping. You are camped out here. Disarm everyone else, not us. Obviously, disarming Christian combatants is not on the day's orders. The French leave without confiscating any weapons. Our interlocutor claims to have had promises from the French army. At the end of the conversation, they told me, calm down. They'll comb over, and as soon as the way is clear, we can move forward. That's what the sergeant told me. He gave me two phone numbers. The following day brings another visit of the French army. But this time, there's no question of letting us film.
Uh, no video. Please, can we avoid that? The 13th Dragon Parachute Regiment is a special forces unit responsible for collecting intelligence. Themselves Christians, they rely on the French army to neutralize Celicas. Everyone seems to find their niche. The Christian neighborhood of Harlot, northwest of Bangui. A French army patrol has cordoned off the area. After reconnaissance with the population, about 200 meters in that direction, we understand there's a rebel group that has been causing terror at night. They're well stocked with arms. We showed the French army the Selika Muslim house. Well, we showed the French army the Selika Muslim house to help them do their job, that's all. However, the informant is not quite a local. Remember, this is one of the men we crossed on Corporal Rombaud's base. Christian fighters direct the French army to flush out their enemies. Hussar paratroopers descend on the neighborhood. Everything is deserted. The population has fled. The area is empty? Indeed, which indicates the presence of potential enemies. From that angle, this image. Between two trees, a picture in the other direction. The Selikas are hidden out in the biggest house in the neighborhood. The paratroopers will not risk storming in. In any case, they lack the right to enter homes. They simply take pictures and record the GPS location. People are inside. They're shut in, as per usual. Rombo's men are disappointed. The French army can do anything more. Go about your lives normally. Remain vigilant and careful. If you don't play the game, neither will they. Back to the camp of Christian fighters near Bangui. Corporal Rombaud makes a call to a French army warrant officer. No, no weapons were lost. The army stayed with us, but we have a shortage of ammunition. Can, can we meet today or tomorrow? Okay, I'd like to meet in the afternoon. I have a lot to tell you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, talk to you soon. The meeting takes place on the Corporal Rombaud's base, away from cameras. We were not allowed to attend. After the French army leaves, there's a debriefing. The French colonel advised us to join with those who still have weapons, in order to attack. Even if the enemy numbers 10,000 or 100,000, you have to attack them at their base. Rombaud and his men are now planning a final assault. They like to believe that France is on their side. That night, they believe to have uncovered a traitor in their ranks. The man has a rough 15 minutes. As punishment, 
he must attend dinner with the leaders. During the evening, he will be executed without any form of trial. We contacted the French army for an interview about operations on the ground. We did not receive a response. Between the Christian majority and the Muslim militias that jockey for power, impartiality appears difficult to maintain. More than a month after the start of Operation Sengaris, chaos still reigns in Bangui. The spiral of violence just the worst, descent into civil war. The brief mission announced by François Hollande could wind up far more complicated than expected. This former colony's cry for help now looks to have turned into a trap.